I'm so happy 2019 brought us nothing but joy, love, and wonder from all the things movies. Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappointed! Hey guys, my name is Chris, and today what I want to do is round off the most disappointing movies of 2019. The year is ending off on a close. I've seen so many movies this year. Every year feels like I'm watching more and more. And since I'm not the type to go ahead and do worst movies of, because making a movie is hard enough itself, I like to look back on the movies that we were looking forward to, looked good, could have had a lot of potential to be another hit classic, but ended up disappointing us either in quality, box office, or personal preference. So in no way are these movies the worst of 2019. These are just movies that left us slightly disappointed. Some of these movies I still consider to be really good, well done movies. They just had elements that disappointed me from what I was hoping to get out of them. Be sure you guys are leaving your list down below of movies that disappointed you this year because I'm really curious to see what you guys have on your list. All right, in no particular order except for the last few, one of the movies that disappointed me the most this year was Glass. Now this was supposed to be the concluding trilogy of M. Night Shyamalan's superhero-esque meta thriller movies. A very wild and intriguing concept that M. Night Shyamalan was able to pull off making Split a surprise sequel to the movie Unbreakable and then having sort of an Avengers ensemble with all the characters from those movies coming together. The disappointing factor for me is that it stopped becoming meta and it leaned too hard into its comic book narrative without really giving us a clear idea of what was going on with some of these characters. Not to mention that twist ending that I can't really call it a twist ending because unless you were building up to it your entire movie, it's more of a surprise ending than a twist ending. M. Night Shyamalan has just been stuck to that where he's the twist guy, where every movie needs to end with a twist, whether it's well-crafted or not. And that, for me, sort of took away some of the greatest parts of this Glass trilogy, which I still ended up liking the movie, just was disappointed with the outcome and how it was closed off. Next movie on the list here that I had such high hopes for because the last installment was so perfectly done, you had big shoes to fill in, Rambo Last Blood. This is the fifth installment of the Rambo franchise, so let's just alone keep keeps getting older but his muscles only get bigger and he tried making a comeback to really conclude this chapter off even though I strongly believe that Rambo 4 did that perfectly. He decided to come back fighting off the cartel in what really felt like a story or a plot that you would see in a 90s straight to DVD action movie. The emotions were really lacking, it's actually felt like the least Rambo Sylvester Stallone has been and more like a glorified Home Alone movie with bad guys coming in to Sylvester's property. There's definitely moments to like and who doesn't like an actual R-rated Rambo movie but it did not keep up with the times and it's the reason 80s 90s style action movies are dying off and John Wick is the way to go because a simple story with just guts and guns and people fighting doesn't do it anymore. You need your story to match that level of intensity with your characters and Rambo Last Blood just did not do that for me. A movie on here that I was really looking forward to as a horror fan Pet Cemetery. This is the Pet Cemetery remake. It's the reimagining of the Stephen King classic. What they were trying to do with twisting some of the elements of the movie. Honestly, this felt like a Disney live action reinterpretation because it's the exact same film with just some characters switched on and off. Instead of having the little boy be possessed, you have the little girl be possessed. But a lot of the movie for me felt like check marks. Things that happen in a Pet Cemetery movie that you're just waiting for to happen. It's family moves in, family is happy, family has birthday parties. Party, kid dies, kid gets buried, kid comes back to life. There was no real room for interpretation, for creativity. It was the same movie given to us with minor tweaks. So with that said, the movie felt very bland to me and the behind the scenes when you realize why this movie was made is because the studio had two years before they had to give the rights back to Stephen King. So this was rushed out just to milk the last cent of this property kind of tells you why the story was the way it was. Another movie here is a franchise film. I guess with these franchise films, you just have a standard. You have a base of where these movies could go, and when they just don't meet them, <laughs> boy, do they not meet them. Men in Black International. How could you mess this up? Okay, one, you have a great director behind the wheel. Director F. Gary Gray, who gave us straight out of Compton, Friday, Fast and Furious 8. The man has proven he's able to direct a great storyline while also making it fun, entertaining, action-packed. And then you have your wonderful cast of Tessa Thompson, Chris Hemsworth, whose comedic timing is very on point for an action star. What went wrong, man? This movie, honestly, was just so flat-out boring. There was 
nothing interesting, nothing exciting about the Men in Black world. I watched the previous three films in preparation for Men in Black International just to get myself into that world. And there's a huge distinction in the flavor and the tone of these movies that made it a lot more fun. A lot of the magic and intrigue of aliens and weaponry and lore, or even some of the politics of how these aliens are allowed to live in our world and why these people police them was just gone and it just felt like a very straightforward MacGuffin plot with little to no reveals. I just came out very disappointed with Men in Black International because when you have Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson on your poster, you think, this is a franchise. We're going to get so many of these movies, it's going to be great. And it just wasn't. <laughs> Next movie of 2019 is one I still really enjoyed. I liked a lot, was happy with what they did with it, but it still killed a franchise. Terminator Dark Fate. My disappointments with Terminator Dark Fate are small in mainly how they handle the John Connor character. Because even if you like the movie like I did, you can't help but deny that character felt really shoved aside and disrespected. I think there was a minor justification as the movie went on, but aside from that, my disappointment also comes in why make this such an expensive, high-budget movie when you've proven that the last three Terminator movies were consistently making less and less and less money at the box office and with almost no one going to go see it support this movie and letting it flop at the box office this is the last time we see Terminator for many many years I was happy to see Arnold on the big screen kicking butt I was happy to see some of these new characters and the intrigue of where the plot could go but the fact that you purposely took such a high risk and very bold decisions some I agree with and some I don't it killed a franchise that was once super beloved and I thought on par with like a Marvel or Star Wars property. Terminator now is nothing. Next disappointing movie on the list here is one that's not even a shocker because I think it's on some people's worst movies of 2019 list. Hellboy. So the Hellboy franchise gets a reboot, gets a reimagining, and man, did this go horribly, horribly wrong. One, not only did you reboot the franchise with basically the storyline of one of the biggest arcs in Hellboy history. To put it into terms, it's like if they rebooted the Avengers and they started with Endgame as their first movie. And you had a great cast with David Harbour as Hellboy, but the comedy Wow, the comedy. I think it's the same effect that the new Predator movie had where this movie didn't realize it was an action film and tried so hard with the comedy. Because there are some cool things like the action is fun, the effects are really interesting, Hellboy holding a sword on fire, come on, that's pretty cool. But like I said, this is a big story, it's a concluding chapter that you made your first film. We are not really attached to any of these new characters and the huge change in tone from the previous Hellboy series to this one is so jarring that it makes you realize just because it's a comic book property does not mean it's going to succeed in the box office like a lot of other comic book properties. Another movie I had a lot of fun with and visually was fantastic to watch on screen but the story and the reception from general audiences just wasn't there and made us delay the third big movie. Godzilla king of monsters what i mean by delay the big third movie is this film was so disappointing to some people that the studio actually delayed and is reworking on kong versus godzilla just because they're like well we kind of did the same thing here with king of monsters people didn't like that we got to rework king kong versus godzilla admittedly super excited for that but this movie you gave us all the monsters we could have asked for you gave us all the action we could have wanted and the visual effects were fascinating but you boggled us down with those human characters and those dumb subplots. We're here to see the monsters fight, and even that wasn't enough to keep us fully entertained. It performed very bad at the box office, not a lot of people showing up, which just surprises me because just the promise of Godzilla fighting so many monsters was not enough to bring a lot of people to the theater. I don't know what will. Here's hoping King Kong vs. Godzilla is a knockout. Probably the most controversial movie I'll have on this list as disappointing, but I want to emphasize it's one I really, really liked. But I left feeling empty and sort of wanting more from this closing chapter. The second installment of an IT franchise is always going to be the most difficult one because you ask anybody who's read the book, watched the miniseries, or has watched now the new movie, the second part of this Stephen King story with the adult 
Hamilton, what happens with going back to Derry is always never as fun as the first film. And that wasn't even my main problem was the fun of the film because the characters in this movie, freaking phenomenal. Bill Hader steals the screen, his character arc is great, James McAvoy also really well done. That restaurant scene completely bliss, but it's the movie deciding to divide up all these characters, give them all their short little interaction with Pennywise, sometimes with Pennywise not even popping up on screen. The way they decide to get rid of Pennywise at the very end, which just bullying him until he turns to a baby come on we had baby yoda we had baby pennywise this year guys and then all the little weird aspects that were brought over from the stephen king book of the ritual of chud and hypnosis and all these odd things that we focus so heavily on that by the end of the movie that didn't matter at all. It Chapter 2 would have been the perfect example where you stay away from the source material because even the source material doesn't have all that much substance to pull away from and that's why movies from books are called adaptations. You adapt to that form of storytelling, you adapt to make it more interesting, you take creative liberties. It Chapter 2 just didn't decide to do that. It decided to follow what Stephen King did and be faithful to that. It gave us a long movie that felt long. Still a really great solid film, but this could have been fantastic. And the fact that it didn't surpass the last movie... It left me a feeling a little empty. And for the most disappointing movie of 2019, in my opinion... The Rise of Skywalker, man. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is supposed to be the concluding chapter to nine films to 42 years of history, wrapping up every TV show, spin-off film, comic book, novel, movie, and I felt like they kind of blew it, man. I don't want to take away anything if you came out really liking the movie because I liked it too. I gave it a positive review and I recommended people to go see it. But there are a handful of nitpicks, handful of gripes I had that if I think too hard on them, it starts to anger me. It starts to make me feel like, why, why did they do this? And the fact that this movie proves that Disney did not have a plan with their Star Wars trilogy at all. How could you buy billion dollars worth of a franchise, make a new trilogy, and just wing it every time a movie came out? That blows my mind. I was happy with the arc they gave Kylo Ren. I liked the stuff they did with Rey in the movie and how powerful she was. The movie was funny, the visual effects were great, and some of the action was really jaw-dropping, but just so many things in this movie that felt messy, that felt rushed, that it's like, wow, your last two films on a technical level with cinematography, pacing, story, felt really good. This movie, it did come out feeling like a fan film. There's plenty of stuff to love in it. I'm just hoping that maybe this is an example that Disney really needs to learn when they do another trilogy or whatever Star Wars movies they continue doing. They're capable of great content. Just look at The Mandalorian. And I hope they take that lesson from this and we'll get nothing but great Star Wars movies from here on out. But that was just my list of most disappointing movies for 2019, guys. Really, it was still a fascinating year and it was kind of hard for me to make 10 movies that I actually found disappointing. So that was a good sign. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys found most disappointing this year. Leave them down below, whether it was one movie in particular or 10, 5. I want to hear it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.